Hi, so today we will be looking at how to build an FLL robot. So this is the robot that I've got here, and I'll just be explaining some tips on how to build a really good FLL robot. Okay, so now that the robot's actually started up, I'll show you how the um, my attachment motors actually work. So these, basically this uh, left motor, this left gear and the left back motor, they're all connected to one motor because at, you probably know there's only four motors allowed on the EV3. So um, two of them are obviously for drive motors, which I have two large motors over here. And then our medium motors, you can't actually see them. I mean, you can kind of see them. They're right here and right here. So they actually attach through a gear train. You can see the beginning of it over there. And uh, it has the output that's connected from the back, but it has an axle that passes through the interior of the robot to the front, which makes it very convenient because uh, I have this frame and it just slides on. See? And all the attachments are now powered. So the front still works, gear, the back spins this red thing. And then uh, same thing for the other side, front, um, top, and back. So this is a very nice frame in my opinion because it has like six different outputs which is really nice and because in FL you generally want to have the most versatility with your base robot. And I also will be showing in a probably in a future video how to build this frame and how to build good attachments for your robots. Okay the next tip I have is to build in a like boxy shape because it can be really convenient when you want to like adjust yourself against the wall because the wall is there for you so it's there for a reason in FLO so it's very convenient and um the thing is these back gears actually stop it from doing that but see on my frame I actually built this little white bar built into it so when it's on it can just line up against the wall because it's still touching the wall. And again, um, refer referencing my previous tips, uh, it's very important for your robot to reorient very frequently in FL because otherwise it's going to get really out of whack and stuff. Okay, and uh, adding on to the boxiness of the robot, I also like to keep it as compact as possible while still having all the benefits of a normal robot, and in my case, even more with the back outputs. Uh, because if it's smaller, you see a base is only so big, right? So you want to have to maximize your space for your robot. Also, nowadays with the new challenges where they're giving advantages to smaller robots, this can be very beneficial. Also, I really like FLL, but the Spike Primes, or I really like LEGO Mindstorms, but the Spike Prime set is actually really beneficial to this factor because their motor, motors are actually really boxy instead of this oddly shaped large motor for Mindstorm. So that's also an added benefit of Spike Prime. So... We have these two color sensors on the front, and those are pretty much, like, completely necessary for FLL it, because you see these lines on the field, like, there's one right here. Um, the two color sensors can actually, like, square up against that line, so it'll be driving at an angle, and then you can just, like, turn the robot, program it, and then it'll reorient itself. Okay, and then we also have a gyro sensor. If we take out this part right here, you can actually see it. You can, it's kind of hard to take out, but you can see it. And so a gyro sensor is, in my opinion, one of the most important sensors on an FLL robot. It might be a little inconsistent, but it's very important because FLL robots tend to not drive straight. 
especially because of the slack in these large motors for the drive wheels. Like, as you can see, it just, like, spins a bit more, even after it stops spinning. So, the gyro sensor keeps it going straight, and I explained how to build a PID algorithm with Arduino in my other video, but that can easily be translated into the LEGO Mindstorms software. Also, here's a PID gyro program, just to show the proof of concept that the gyro sensor is one of the most beneficial sensors in um, Mindstorms in FLL. So, here it goes. See, it works really well. It even corrects itself better than the Arduino version. Also, before I go on, I want to mention that these tips can also work for building a Spike Prime robot. It's just that I don't have the Spike Prime set, I only have the EV3, so I'm explaining it with this. Okay, now moving on to our next tip, is our attachment motors. So, as you can see, we have these outputs right here, and we have an output on the back right here. Now, most robots only actually have um, these two top ones, so that's what I think makes this robot really good is because it has these back outputs too, which can be really helpful, especially if you have to do two missions at one time. Okay, so as you can see from this picture, um, I imported it just to show you how the gear train of the medium motor actually works. So from this picture, this red box, it highlights the uh, medium motor inside the robot. And this is actually the output shaft right here. Wait, hold on. It's right here. Um, that's where the medium motor directly connects to. And then this gear train right here uh, creates the top rectangle, which is basically a really long axle just through the um, just through the whole entire robot. And this connects to when we go to this picture over here. It connects to this picture, uh, this axle right here. And this has one of those bevel gear um, pieces that are already pre-made, and it connects to this top axle. And this is also mirrored on the other side, as you can see from this picture. And yeah, that's basically how it all works.